So I just built a gaming computer uh, for the first time in quite a while. Uh, this has a 6900 XT graphics card. Uh, it has a 5900X uh, Ryzen 9 processor, uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 3200 megahertz, a one terabyte Gen 4 SSD, among other things. Um, and this video will show you uh, the full install process um, so you can do it yourself if you want. Uh, it's a pretty good time to buy a computer, um, build a computer, by comparison to prior um, years or months, I should say, because, you know, the last couple of years has been really inflated. So now it's not. So if you're considering buying or building one, uh, this this guide might be helpful for you because it's, it's full on step by step. Um, every step of the way is recorded. Uh, that's why the video is so long. So uh, one thing to note is at the end, make sure you follow the instructions uh, for formatting your SSD in the BIOS uh, and in Windows install so that you can have access to smart access memory, which is an AMD um, resizable bar feature, which lets the supposedly, you know, um, lets the, graf the graphics card perform better. Um, with more access to memory uh, instead of the typical 256 megabytes. So um, other than that, just follow along and uh, I hope you enjoy it, guys. Hey everyone, so I just want to do a little uh, in-depth walkthrough of the case that I chose for this build. Price was the primary concern when picking a case. There were a lot more um, options in the much more expensive bracket, but I found this case on Newegg for $53. It is a Rosewell, but what really drove me to it was, so it's tempered glass. That's not what drove me to it. It was, I think these things, okay, take that off quickly. Let me just stand that somewhere. It was, I'm gonna scratch my table. This right here. So this has a vertical, like side-mounted spot for a radiator. So it's a two. It's for a two, 240 millimeter, so two fan, 120 millimeter wide radiator, uh, and that's how I'm going to mount for my liquid cooling. And it achieves this by having no um, optical drive slots, and the disc drives is only spots for. You might be able to stick two, two hard drives on the back. I know there's spots for uh, SSDs. And if you don't want the radiator, you can put them right here. There's two SSD, two hard drives right there. So you can do it. And then also up here, up here, there's a spot for two more full size. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I think I have a three terabyte and a two terabyte for my old computer. I'm just going to throw those up there. That's where I keep like movies and stuff. Um, and then I'm obviously using the onboard NVMe slots for my operating system for video games, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but so that was the main appeal. And you know, online, some of the reviews said, "Oh, it only has two little slots for the radiator." These are held on by a screw. I don't know if you can see that. So this whole thing comes out. Like there's a little, there's a thing right here. So the radiator is a big hole in it. And I'm, let me show you how it looks on the other side. This is what it goes through. So yes, there are there are little vent, you know. There's a grid for the exhaust of the radiator, but that's still plenty. Like there's a lot of holes, and it looks like this on the other side. So, I mean, I'm not worried about it. People were thinking that those little slots were all that you got. They're gonna be air. I don't know how they didn't notice that, but regardless. Uh, so that's the main reason I purchased this. The other reason is I like the way that this has three bottom fans. There is a filter underneath. It's a plastic filter with a grid. Another fan for the back exhaust. I mean, when you get three, four fans, four RGB fans in a case, you know, I mean, for 53 bucks, it's a no brainer. Power supply gets mounted up here. You can spray it around the back so you can see. A big hole for the, uh, I guess, intake. Exhaust will be there. Here's the hard drive cradle I was talking about. So you can put one up top, one below. It does have a vent. Um, there's nice cable management here. Uh, two slots here. This is what I was talking about. I think you can put SSDs back here. 
I'm not really sure what the point of those little cages are, but I'm pretty sure that that's, you could also put an SSD there. It looks like it's got that, unless you're supposed to swing those around to the other side, I don't know. I don't think you could fit a 3.5 back here, so yeah, so you pretty much have 3.5s on the opposite side here, or up in the cradle. Um, another thing, you know, RGB controller here. I have a gigabit motherboard, so I'm gonna have to use this little thing here. But I think with my with my actual liquid cooler, it came with this nice little hub. So I'm gonna try and use that, see if I can't like plug in this controller to the hub and see if I can get that to work and then plug that into the motherboard. That's gonna be the hardest part of the build because I am very new to RGB. Back when I built my last computer, it wasn't a thing. We still had those tubes. The fans lit up and the tubes lit up, but there was no color changing, there was no pulsing, no anything. So we just plug those straight into the Molex connector. So yeah, like uh, that's gonna be a new challenge for me. So for IO on this case, we have two USB 3s, 3.2s up the top. I'm not really sure what that is. I guess I should check. Let's consult the handy instruction panel, or instruction thing. See, there's the hard drive mount, so. Let me see, what is this, does it say on the back? So, okay, so there, that's a tray. So the, I guess you mount them to that and that's easy removal. You don't have to mount them straight through the motherboard. And there is no, that's LED switch. I guess that controls the lights. Oh, I'm okay with that. Easy, quick on off. That's actually pretty cool, so. Microwave, I'm sorry. <laughs> Microphone. Head headset. Um, I think this should go to HD audio. My motherboard's got 7.1. I don't know how that works with headphones, but, and then the power button. So it's off to the side. Uh, in addition to the fan RGB, this is an RGB light strip. This is an RGB light strip. And that's all there is to it, really. Um, thing to note with this, the reason that I purchased my, the graphics card I did, which was a 1600 XT gigabit, um, gigabyte, gigabit, gigabyte, Gigabyte right. um, is it was only 286 millimeters. So let me see if I can. Okay, so I guess I don't measure things that often because it took me a lot longer to find a ruler than I thought it would. But so with this case, you can see, uh, I believe it's actually 300 millimeters is the max limit. It's probably just because you know that includes a little fin on the card, and there's a little bit on the edge, so. Actually, this is, yeah, there you go. It's 300 perfect. It's good. This really goes to 305. Um, and my graphics card goes to 286, so it's like right here. So that's why I picked that one. Let me show you the graphics card. Yep, so here we go. As you can see right here, well below the 300. I'm doing it about to the uh, where I was measuring it from in the case. So two. Yeah, at the longest point, it's like 286. It's almost perfect, so. That's why I picked this 6900 over some of the other ones. So there was an ASRock that was nice, but it was like 320. I know it seems kind of stupid to pick a, you know, graphics card based on the case, but this happened to be on sale, and I really liked the way the case looked. So I said, okay, I'll do this one, you know. It doesn't have uh, as much, you know, RGB or stickers as some of the others, but it looks nice. And it's a uh, 6900 XT, and I got it for 730 bucks uh, after mail and rebate. But so yeah, that's why um, I picked this card. And if you do choose this case, if you choose this um, Prism S500, be sure that your graphics card is under 300 millimeters, uh, including the wire. So the wires on my card come out the side. I think most ones do. But just make sure that you, you realize that if you're going to use the radiator. If you're not going to use the radiator, which you can put the radiator here. Um, I don't think you can put it here. You might be able to, but I don't know where the heck it would get air, air flow, airflow from. Um, there's no way to put it up top. So, uh, Yeah, so if you're going to use the radiator for liquid cooling and you want to put the radiator here, just make sure your card is under 300 millimeters. I'd give yourself a little bit more leeway just in case. Uh, but if you're not, if you're gonna use it somewhere else, then honestly, 
it was a really cheap case, so it's not a bad, you know, not a bad choice regardless, but that's really the only reason why you would pick this case is for that side mounted radiator um, and the fans, you know, so I liked it. Other than that, like it's a very plain design. See, it's just a box. So not really anything special. There was a different version of this that has like literally, there's a white and a black version that had a, like a, like a, um, embossed, like, you know, had like a, like, I don't know if you guys remember the old Windows phones, but it looked like that, where it's like the diamond, like HTC diamond. Um, the pictures when I bought this, those pictures were on the product page. So I wasn't really sure what I was going to get. I personally like the flat, the, the mat, you know, regular with no, no, uh, texture, but the other one would have been cool too. Um, yeah, so that's about it for this case. Uh, I'm going to get to building this now. My SSD from uh, Amazon still hasn't arrived, but that should be easy to pop in right before you do the graphics card. So I'll get to that point. I'm going to start with uh, by putting in the uh, power supply just so I can uh, route the appropriate cables I need uh, through the back of the case. Let's install the power cables first before we install the actual uh, power supply into the case. Um, if you have an easy to access case, you might be able to do it the other way around, but I mean, I think just make it however, however easy you can. So this is the 24 pin. And then that's uh, so obviously here's the other side of it. This goes to the motherboard. I think it's a 28, uh, or no, it's a, yeah. I'm not really sure what it is, but regardless, this one goes to the motherboard. This one here, in this case, uh, or this this power supply, I should say, has its has it like a partly cable right there. So just plug that in. Then I'm gonna spin this around, plug it into the CPU. I don't know if you can see that 24 ATX CPU. So, or I'm not CPU, sorry, it's just 24 pin ATX. So that's gonna go up here. That should be in. So now we're all set for that. Leave this hanging. We're gonna put this behind the motherboard, or uh, having come out through the one of the power supply slots. Then, for your specific build, you're gonna require different cables. I need the CPU right here, which is an eight pin. And see, there's different connect. I'm sorry, guys. This is a little bit. I should move over here because I keep kind of pointing to the camera. So you can see here, two different connectors. This is the one that's gonna go into the power supply. Again, this is specific to your power supply. Your connectors may look different. That's connected. Let that hang. Then I also need these, I believe are, are these are for the graphics card. They're split, so I don't know if that makes, you know, if most of them are different. Actually, let's see if we have just regular eight pin ones. No. We got one. I'm not sure what the point of that is. Maybe some, maybe some require, uh, I don't know. Maybe some pins require two. I'm gonna plug one of these in here though. And I'll confirm before that I need uh, I need three of these eight pins for just the graphics card alone. So, oh, interesting. I wasn't aware that these are literally the same cable. I don't know if that's acceptable, but maybe that will work. So I don't have a spare cable lying around. Maybe I could just use that that CPU one. Let me check the motherboard and see if we need both. Yeah, we obviously do. So one goes CPU and then these, I don't know if there's a better way to do this. I don't have another cable that's, um, that's got one little connector on it. So I'm gonna have to have a, I really hate that. I cannot possibly be. 
All right, well, I didn't want to have that. I wanted to have it be... So that's, that's what we need, basics. This will power the motherboard, the graphics card, processor. There are other cables here. We have another dual PCIe. So if you have um, a second graphics card or I don't know what else would go in there anymore, but um, we also have these SATA power cables. So there's actually four on this one thing. I'm gonna need one of these um, and I'm actually gonna plug it in right now so I don't have to go to the back just to install the um, operating system. I don't have a disk drive. Um, I don't have a disk drive on here. And I'm gonna put it up, put it up top because I think it'll be, actually there's more space down below. I don't have a disk drive permanently in the case, but I need one to install the operating system because it comes on a disk. So we still have, so you can see with this power supply, we have two more SATA power cables. We have a IDE, I think, or it's a Molex, and that would go into the peripheral as well. And then we have, I think this is for, <laughs> I haven't seen one of these in forever. I think this is to connect a Molex fan to the motherboard four pin. So we won't be using that. Um, and then the power cable. And this did come with zip ties. Also cable ties that you could use, but that's gonna come later. So we're gonna get this installed in the actual case and then move on from there. Okay, so we're coming out from the back. Obviously we have all our power cables here. Fan is gonna be down there. That's gonna go mounting towards the case. We have the exhaust part here. Uh, that goes to the back of the case. Sorry, the exhaust part here. I'm they're gonna make this wider, maybe. All right, does that work? I'm gonna be in it. I don't like being in it, but at least you can now see what I'm talking about. Um, just gonna slide it right in. Make sure you don't cover any of the included RGB cables or pinch them, I should say. A lot of weight on it now. So let me see if I can spin this so you can see. Perfect. So line it up for the screws here. And there's a lot of like pull down from these cables. I probably should have um, put them up before I did this. <laughs> put one here and that should be enough to hold it so I can tighten it without holding the cables. Okay, good. All right. so. These two, these screws came with the power supply. Just mount them wherever the holes are on your case. So like you can see, I have two holes here, one here, one here, you know, and that's along the whole way around. So I guess some power, power supplies have a different um, bolt pattern. Just take this, screw it in. And obviously this goes without saying, but I'm sure that you know, I'll say it anyways, is do not, um, do not be doing any of this with it actually plugged into the wall. There's a power on off switch, master on off switch right there. And obviously this is the, the power cable goes behind this little thing. I'm gonna leave that label on. It's a good, uh, you know, a good little place to put it cause you can't use your computer without it. I'm not really sure what this smart fan does. I don't know if you guys can read this. Probably not. Hmm. On this power supply. It says, smart fan, smart zero fan on. The fan does not operate if the PSU is at low loads. Off silent fan operation. So I'm not really sure what that means. I guess off might be the normal feature and they're just calling it silent fan. But uh, I'll probably turn it off because I want the fans to run all the time. If that's what it means. So I'm not entirely sure. Um, but we get to that, cross that bridge when we get there. So, so that's the power supply now in. The next step is to, I wanna put the motherboard in. 
there's really not that much that needs to go. Maybe the power supply pins, I might try that. Um, sorry, not the power supply, the uh, case power button pins. Um, Cause those are little pins that are really annoying. I don't know if you can see these. This is like the hardest part. This used to be the hardest part of building a computer back in the old days before all the RGB stuff. Cause you just had to find which pins on the motherboard these went to. I noticed that there was a, some sort of like guide that came with, I think the motherboard. Not really sure what it is, but here you go. It looks like you can organize them like that, which is a neat little feature. So let's try doing that. I'm not entirely sure. Hard drive, LED, plus or minus. I don't see that on here. I see hard drive, and I guess maybe that's uh, that's just where it goes. Maybe, what else would it be, right? I don't know how much that means. It's like the activity light. I don't know many computers that even use those anymore. All right, so that's good for that. What else are we doing here? Well, that's it. So I'm not really sure how those LEDs are gonna turn off with that button. Unless there is one going to it, which there is not. Oh yeah, there is. Okay, so they have it, they have it already mapped. So, okay, cool. So that's it right there. That was the hardest part, assuming this does go in. And then on the motherboard, I don't know if you can see it right here, but it should just go straight down here. There's a spot for it. All those things are labeled out. And I would assume I would assume that they that the guide is properly organized, so all we have to do is click that in. So that's the hardest part of the motherboard, um, other than fixing the processor. So I might do the processor before we put it in there, um, and make sure the water cooler fits. That's actually a good idea. So I'm not going to put the water cooler on. Mm, maybe I will. Okay, got our nice close up here on the motherboard. As you know, the processor goes right here. Uh, let us see what kind of bracket we need for the water cooler before we get anywhere. So Intel AMD. This looks like the Intel bracket. Nope. Or maybe TR4. Also, nope. And we don't even need the bracket. I don't know if I misplaced it, but the, this came with no um, no instructions for the water cooler. Um, you can find them online, so I'll check that right now. To be sure. Okay, so after finally reading the instructions, which I should have done to begin with, and by reading I mean looking at pictures because there's no words, um, with this cooler, it's a damn good thing that I did do this before putting it in, which obviously if I had remembered the old days, that wouldn't have been a question. So this is the cradle for the back of the motherboard came with my cooler, it replaces the back plate that was there. Um, it's plastic, it's kind of like an all-in-one uh, AM, let's see if you can see that, AM4, uh, AMD, I'm not really sure which one those are, maybe prior than AF4, and on the back we have the Intel sockets. So it's just the holes line up there. Um, and we're gonna hope this works, because it needs to clear, the brackets for the actual mount need to clear these capacitors right here. So hopefully that's the case. So it came with these um, silver screws with um, hexagonal tops. 
that slot right in there. You do have to force them. Uh, it won't break it. Um, just to force them a little bit into the right holes. And then that goes in the back. You can find it like that. Sit it down. Just like so. And then the next part is these little things here. Too close, I guess. But so the black side goes down. And this is gonna go all the way through. Like so. I'm gonna tighten these when I get, uh, get them all on, situated. The black side's like a little rubberized thing that holds onto the motherboard and probably doesn't scrape it too, which is good. So we're now solid on that. You can see, let me flip this around so I can show you. Our plate is now affixed on the back. Then we're gonna mount the actual brackets. So these are the ones here. You can see it says TR4, AM4 and TR4 right there. So I didn't, originally I didn't notice these because the bracket was, the bag says TR4 or just, um, and I was like, okay, well that's not the one that I'm looking at, but you do need it, so. So just like that, there's not a lot of clearance between the uh, SSD, which is annoying to me, but it does clear the capacitors barely. And ideally, I think we would put the processor in first. So I'm going to do that so I can drop the pin down. Let me make sure this does clear this. Great. Well, it does. And here's the other side. I was looking at, I was making a question about this before with this SSD. So this says you peel it off and, and put the SSD right on it. So that's good. So it should actually be a uh, competent heat sink. So, so now we know though that does clear just um, I just say how hard this is doing this standing with a camera between me and the board. But I was trying to figure out the best way to actually get you guys to be able to see this stuff. I know some of my other videos are a little bit, you know, I'm focusing on doing it myself rather than filming it. So, so I'm going to take these brackets off and we're going to install the processor. And the cooler itself has the thermal paste. So, so AMD processors are pretty easy. They do have their pins though. I should open it the other way, it's fine. Just do not touch the pins. And the arrow is gonna line up with the arrow on the actual motherboard. Let me see if I can find it. If we zoom in, can I see it there? No, not there. Looks like it's right here. And I do believe that's correct. So you can see here's the pins on, the, on a process, just what it looks like for AMD. The NVIDIA ones uh, do not have the pins on the actual processor. They have them on the motherboard and you just drop it in. So open up the socket, open up the um, clip here that unlocks it. You're just gonna drop this right in. Easy peasy. If some, when some people have a uh, a processor installation tool, which I think is hilarious, and then you just drop that. So we're all situated. That's the easiest uh, easiest part of the whole build, but but the most delicate for sure because if you bend those pins, it can cause problems. Um, but super easy. So you can see right now if you zoom out, if I stop the camera shaking. That's what it looks like. Now we can put this on. I mean, you might be able to do it beforehand. Actually, I don't think you can, because you need to be able to access the, yeah, you could, the pin. Okay, and then the next step for these, for this bracket, is right here. I'm just gonna screw these on like so. 
Again, I'm not going to tighten them until I get them all on. I assume, you know, that this will drop it in, you know, and it'll be, there won't be any alignment issues, but I'm not entirely sure. So, and where did my other screw go? Um, hmm, I had it right there. Here it is. It's over here. Okay. And the other thing you can do before you put this in, that's not a lot of clearance. It is clearing it, but there's not a lot of clearance, so I don't know. I mean, I don't know how unusual that is for a motherboard, uh, for a modern motherboard with, with these NVMe slots, especially because these have heat sinks. So without them, that might not be an issue, but, um, but yeah, we're good to go now. Now you can drop in the cooler. And uh, that's all you need to do. And I think I might. The problem is there's no easy way to get it in with a radiator. So I think I'm still going to do that because I want to be able to make sure it's all tight before I put it in the case. So, so yeah, remember when I said that you can put this in without doing anything else? And then you can do everything when it's already in the case. I think I'm going to do it the other way around and do it with the liquid cooler first because... I'm not sure. If you can flip, lay it on the side. We also need to be able to access the actual mounting screws on the motherboard. So like we need to be able to access here, and here, 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 here. I don't know if they have it. It does. It, the case has risers already installed. Hopefully it's still correct for ATX. But um, yeah. Let me, might as well put, no, nah, maybe not the RAM. So let's see actually how this works. So I've seen a lot of videos recently that have kind of been like, yeah, it doesn't matter, it matters, it doesn't matter. Okay, so I just went out, backed out to 0.6. I'm not sure why, maybe with the um, flash on you can't, but I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I had wanted it like that, but now remember, my stuff has to go like this. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, and then you can't even do that, so. Does it have to go like this? I'm not loving that, to be honest. It would go, it could go like this. Definitely can't, so, well, unless I can spin those, but then we get leakage issues. So I guess it's got to go like this. <laughs> Not loving that, to be honest. I think ideally you'd be putting it like this. No. Like this. That doesn't work. So we need to do, I don't know. And there's no way I can have it go like that. It has to go with the things up top because of the graphics card. The question is, can I get it like this? I can, and maybe I will. Oh no, I can't. <laughs> it has to go. There's only one way this can go, and it's like this. Don't love that, but it is what it is. Okay. Well, now we know. All right, so let me take the cover off. So you can see right here, I don't like to keep leaving all this weight on there. You can see right here it's covered. This thermal paste is already on here. I'm gonna go ahead and just use their thermal paste. I didn't actually purchase any. Um, and I'm actually gonna take a microfiber cloth and wipe that processor down first because I can see a little smudge on it. Because um, it's it's evenly applied, so I'm gonna I'm gonna trust them over you know 
myself and hope that the brand of thermal paste they used is good enough, which I'm sure it will be. Okay. Now I've already forgotten which way we're situating this. Okay, so let's just drop this on. Once again, I'm not crazy about the way that we have to mount this. Uh, there's a lot of tension on these cables. Um, by cables, I mean hoses. But we're gonna uh, give me a thing to put between this. I'm gonna rest that there. There we go. I'd say it's very um, important to tighten these evenly so that it's not, you know, putting pressure on one side or the other. Okay, I think we should be good. Let me see if I can tilt this up so you can see it. The answer is no, you cannot. How about if I go like this? There you go. So you can see the process are still exposed, but the thermal, um, the cooler and the thermal paste are firmly clamped down on it. It's not too tight, but it's not moving anywhere, especially with the block springs. So um, it's more than hand tight though. So we're good. And uh, that's it for the CPU mounting with the cooler. Now I'm going to install a RAM, and then that should be all I do. Ooh. I still don't have the SSD. <laughs> I have a SSD, but not the SSD. That'll be coming at, at some point today, hopefully. Multiple days delayed. It's supposed to be Saturday. It's now Tuesday. so um, I think I can put that in while the thing, while the motherboard is actually in the case, so that shouldn't be a problem, so. Okay, so the RAM is pretty simple. This is the uh, T-Force uh, Vulcan Z. Got this again on Prime Day or, or thereabouts uh, for $75, I believe, for 32 gigabytes. So the RAM should go in slots A2 and B2. Uh, they kind of goofy, they, they were goofy, but um, it does say first, I don't know if you can read that, right there. So that's, you know, that's the place that you wanna go. Um, when installing RAM, you don't install them back to back, and it's usually the furthest away from the, the CPU and then the second closest, or the second furthest. Uh, to get the best dual channel, this is ridiculous, operation for two sticks of memory. Uh, if you have four sticks of memory and they're all the same speed, it doesn't matter. You can put them all in four. But So I've opened the clips here. You can see, oops, they're there. This is going to be challenged with this liquid cooling here. I'm going to probably prop it up to see if I can get it underneath. To say I'm a little bit disappointed with the way the liquid cooling is going, uh, 
it's not as long of cables or tubes as I thought, but it's not short cables, tubes. But this is just kind of the way they have that. You know, to get it to be a side mounted radiator is a problem, but. Okay. And then four goes right here. Obviously, let me pull that back out again. Obviously, line up the slots with the ones on the motherboard. I mean, it's not super obvious, but shorter side here goes down. Um, could be, could vary based on each motherboard, I guess. Uh, open up the clips, slide it in. You know, try to be careful. You don't break anything or scratch any of the pins. Just push it in. Snap in the sides. They should auto snap in. Okay, and that's it. It is touching. It is touching my uh, heat heat spreader there. But hopefully, when I get it sideways in the case, it'll pop it up a bit. And that is confirmed. It does absolutely clear it when it's sideways in the case. Okay, good. All right, we are good to go. Uh, that's everything that we can do on the motherboard. Uh, graphics card will go in after the fact, but let's now put the motherboard into the case. Uh, <laughs> I keep saying this again, but again, RGB. It might not be. It might not be hard to access all this stuff in when it's in there already, but. This is going to be an absolute nightmare to figure out. So this is this controls all the case fans here. I think this is if you don't have a a motherboard that controls it, because I think otherwise you use this connector here. And I had a setup working. And I got to remember what that was going through the deep cool right here. And actually, that's a good idea. I might as well, uh, I might as well mount the fans to the deep cool radiator right now, just so we can know where everything's going. Okay, so to mount the fans to the radiator, you're gonna use these very long screws, of which I seem to be missing one. Oh, I already put one in. Ha, ah, good stuff. So I'm gonna mount these with the cable since I'm going to be vertical like this. I'm gonna, there's a channel for the, for the power uh, in the case. So I'm gonna mount them facing this way and then just have the cables go straight through to the back. That should be the easiest, cleanest way to do it. You're gonna have them, uh, just depending on how you wanna have them pulling or pushing, this will be pushing through the radiator like this. So with the bracket on the other side, um, or the, the support structure on the other side. And that's the way it would be in the um, in all the pictures. So the RGB is fully out. You could have a pull system as well. Um, but that would probably be better to have the fans on the other side. If you're gonna do that system. But pusher is the way I would like it, and that's the way it's gonna get installed. And I just like to say, uh, speak highly of this product. Uh, at least in terms of, you know, before without ever turning it on. Uh, the fans seem high quality, you know, RGB. The pump seems cool. And like I said, it looks like a little reactor. Um, the tubes could be a little bit longer, but again, I don't know if that's normal. Like, I don't know if that's a normal, like for a non 360 millimeter uh, radiator, you know? There's a there's um, anti uh, vibration pads on these fans, which is nice. You don't have to put little bumpers in. Um, this is tightened too much. Okay, perfect. And then I'm gonna put this with the cable here, and then that'll be perfect. Uh, again, I picked these, um, I picked this cooler, 
partly because of the price, partly because of the way it looks, but also because unless they're lying, which I doubt they are, these are extremely high, um, extremely high CFM fans. It said it was almost 70 CFM, so um, that's pretty damn good. Uh, a lot of the other ones in this price range, uh, you know, I, I got this on Prime Day, so it was cheaper than it normally it would be, uh, and a lot of the other ones were cheaper as well. But like, um, I was looking at a thermal take, and it had a 50, I believe, CFM, and the static pressure was lower, so that, this, this performs better than that. Um, not that that one's a bad cooler, it's not at all. Um, but some people were like, oh, change the fans. And that obviously defeats the purpose of buying an all-in-one if you have to swap out the fans, which is not good enough. Uh, and the other one I was looking at had, that had more, uh, same CFM but more static pressure was the um, Cooler Master 280, which just wouldn't fit in the case, unfortunately. Okay, so that looks good. These are all on securely. It's the finished product right there. And then uh, I guess we screw it in through the back, probably using the same screws that we take the bracket off with. So we're going to do this handheld because I got sick of dropping the phone and trying to adjust it for horizontal versus vertical through that stupid um, like clamshell holder that I have for it. So this is the bracket I was talking about. I'm going to drop this screw I can tell you right now. Um, I didn't. Yay. So we remove this so we can actually mount the radiator and I really hope it fits. I mean, it should fit, right? Yeah, it will fit. Uh, 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 um. And I think that we can just use these screws. You know what? I wonder. I wonder. If we could make this, I don't think I can get the water cooling, but I'll check. If there's a spot for the water cooling, I may. You may, we may be able to mount this with the radiator on the other side. No, we definitely cannot. We might, we might have been able to if this wasn't here, but look at there's no clearance between these two fans. So, unfortunately, that's not a possibility. Oh well, no biggie. Would've been cool though. <laughs> would've been cool because then I would've been flush, you know, just the fans right there, but whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm actually not sure that would, that wouldn't work actually, because the screws are here. So no, the radiator reservoir is gonna be all the way up here. Sorry, all the way up here. Okay. We're nearing it. We're nearing the installation here. I'm gonna make a choice to install the RGB after we get the motherboard in because I wanna get this in, get the radiator up, make sure everything looks good. And then we'll just connect the RGB and then after that comes, as far as putting stuff in, just comes the graphics card the SSD, which I don't have yet, and then cable management. Oh, and the hard drives, which I may or may not install right away. Uh, I still have to, I don't think there's anything on them on my old computer that, that is a programmer or a uh, link to the operating system. So I probably can just take them out and plug them in, but that's, that's not top of mind. It's, this computer is gonna have two terabytes of storage to begin with, so uh, on SSDs, so it'll be good. Let's, uh, Let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna put in the motherboard right now. There's really not much of an easy way to do this because I need to stand it up for the um, liquid cooling. So that's kind of just gonna sit in there for now. Make sure that I don't have anything below it, which I did. And then I'm just gonna try and sit this in. 
There are risers pre-installed in the case, as I showed you. They're little gold things. And all these cables already are really a pain in the ass. Okay. All right, so let's see if we can slide this over. Take this thing off, I guess. I'm not gonna get a chance to get to it. Okay. Tight, tight fit. I don't even know if this is gonna fit. I know this isn't the first case to have a fan, an exhaust fan there, so I have to imagine this is not an issue, and this is just being stupid right now. I'm gonna take that fan off and drop that in. Sliding this underneath it is just not, it's just a big pain in the ass, and it's not worth it. Now we can get this over without any issue. Actually, nope, we're good. Okay. lined up ish so then the, the case came with these motherboard screws I could not find any other ones there are six screws here that I thought were gonna be what we're gonna work but there's only six and we need nine so I did find these ones with the case and then they're specifically labeled motherboard so that's what we're gonna use there's Perfect. Uh, let's put this fan back in. I don't remember how it was. I think it was like this. And I hope we can get it. Oh yeah. I'm not sure why that was so hard to get in. These are massive screws, by the way. Like straight up old, old style. Huge, look at these. All the other ones were such small threads. These are the, those chew right through them. If you had those bumpers back in the day, those little like, um, what were they called? Like, like I was saying before, the cushioning, but they came in like these little like washers and you just literally use these screws and they would just destroy them. <laughs> If you kept screwing, they just chew right through them. I did that wrong, as in should have done the corners first, but we're good. I'm gonna try and slide this up, maybe. Perfect. Ooh. Actually. Nice. Good, good, good. And nice. Perfect. All right. Good stuff. Okay. Now I'm going to put the radiator on. There's not any clearance at all for this cable. At all. Okay, now there is. Thanks. I have no idea how people do such magic with their cable hiding. <laughs> because like this, you're gonna be able to see this. It's not an issue, but I'm gonna stand it up and get from the back. And then, so this is interesting, by the way. I did not realize, you know, I was trying to cram this thing 
in, but there's not a lot of pressure anymore because I didn't realize how far away the motherboard sits from the radiator. I was thinking it'd be right there. I forgot about these. And also it just shows to show you how much more, how much longer the graphics cards are versus the, uh, motherboard. There's also a lot of space here, just in case you're wondering. Oh, you can't see that. There we go. There's a lot of space to the right of the uh, radiator. It said that you could do a bigger radiator, which is definitely true. Uh, now I think about it, it's possible my 280 would have worked because I got such a small graphics card. Because where's my handy, uh, handy ruler here? Ooh, it would be close. It would be close because it would come to 290 because it would be an extra 10 on each side. So 286, maybe you'd be really close. So I, I prefer having it like this. It's probably not necessar necessary to have such a bigger cooler anyways. Um, but all right, let's stand this up. Okay, so there's really no way to good, no really good way to put this on video. So I'm just going to show you this side. Well, I go around the back and try and put these uh, screws in. Feature of my screwdriver, or I need two hands, two more hands, I should say. All right. Should be noted on the back of here and I'll, I'll spin you around once it's up. Um, actually, I got an idea. I do have a kickstand on my phone that might work. All right. Okay, so let me get all these, these uh, cables out. This is, the, this is the bag. This is going to be nuts. Uh, I'm just literally just screwing it up here. There's a spot here, a spot here. And then there's a bunch more down low. I don't know how many I'm going to use in here. There's, there are eight. So maybe that's what we're going to be doing. I don't know if it matters to be honest, but I'm going to leave them loose and then uh, we will so I'm doing that bottom one right here. Uh, we will uh, organize it, you know, slide it up where it needs to go. So I fixed the cable issue. Um, so that you can see there's no cable back behind there uh, between the radiator and the case. Everything is all uh, fastened up. I decided to put this as high as possible with, this, with these screws just so that I could give as much height difference between the top of the radiator and the cooler over here. Because, like I said, they said that there was, you know, air bubbles, etc. Um, but we are good now. So this is in. I mean, no 24-pin. Is installed no CPU, no any RGB at all, and no SSD currently. So, and no I/O. But as far as installing the actual stuff, we have the pro we have the power supply in, uh, the motherboard in, the radiator in, all the fans back in. So this is pretty uh, coming along pretty well. Um, I mean, like you see, it's not that difficult. I mean, I don't even know how long we've been doing this, but. If I weren't recording, this would be going faster too. So, um, and not assuming you have RGB. If we didn't have RGB, all we'd be doing right now is plugging in the CPU and the motherboard to the power. And uh, obviously if I had the SSD installed with it, two seconds uh, and then the IO, and then we'd be done. So the hardest part now remaining for me for sure is trying to figure out how to get the RGB controllers to work um, because I've never done it before. And I hear that there's 
two different types. There's three pin, five volt, and, and four pin, 12 volt. Uh, it looks like the deep cool folks have a converter that I that they included because it has a it has the typical the pin that goes right. Where does it go? Here. All the way down there. Let's see if I can zoom in. Yeah, this VDG. So I don't know if that's the if that's the flat five pin or whatever, but we're gonna we're gonna try and use that and then connect everything else off of that. I don't really know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna try it. So next up is the I/O for the case. There we go. There we go. Let's see if I can line this up right. It says power LED and speaker I'll go over there. So I'm going to put it in like this then. That's definitely lined up right. So this should go in. without issue cool that made this super easy by the way unlike the old days where you had to put in each pin separately this is little cradle assuming I put everything in correctly which I think I did made this work very well uh, in case you're wondering this case had power SW and then the motherboard on its cable um, and that just goes to the PW spot on that little uh, cradle or on the motherboard. So the power P, power SW is power switch, and then PWR plus minus is the switch uh, for the motherboard. So that's where it lines up to. Other than that, everything was extremely you know one to one. Great news! The Dacia Sandero has gone on sale. No, just kidding. Actually, da -da -da, the SSD has arrived. So, that means that we can continue this build. This is the Western Digital Black uh, SN850. It is a Gen 4. It says up to 7,000 uh, megabytes per second read. I thought it was 5,000, right? But I could be wrong. It could be lower than that. Doesn't matter, apparently. It doesn't seem to say it. <laughs> That's kind of, uh, whatever. I mean, the only reason I purchased this, I was planning on just using my, this one right here, which is the uh, Silicon Power Gen 3. This is like 2800 or something like that. Uh, read, and like 2500, right? It's plenty fast, but um, I didn't want to risk any reliability issues having that be my main drive, just so I don't have to, um, you know, reinstall Windows and all that all that jazz. So, you can see it right there. So this will go, if I can find my, my screwdriver. Oh, here it is. Uh, this will go right here in the first slot. So the way this motherboard works, as I, as I understand it, is, and it's thanks to Gen 4, you know, the, the new chipset, not new, but, you know, a uh, chipset, is that the... Try, let me see if I can see what's going on is that the top slot goes to the top slot goes directly to the processor it has four pci lanes to it whereas another four go to the chipset down here and then that gets spread out among the others so the gen 4 is only the top slot at least that's how i understand it it should be it should be going right in here there you go much like that um Okay, now I'm not really sure. This has a you know a, a heat pad. 
I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Do I just drop it in like this and then let it let it push itself in or, I, or should I be pushing this further on to it? I'm gonna do it this way just so it stays, you know, where it needs to go. Okay. Just for uh, ease of access, I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna put my second one in right now. This is currently formatted for a Xbox One X. Uh, I don't really use it anymore, so I'm gonna let that one run on its hard drive. There was definitely a spacer that just dropped, but I don't need it for my stuff. I need it for that enclosure. All right. Second one. There's a slot, by the way, in case you're not like slinging it. So it's just like the RAM, you have to line it up. There you go. Interesting. That is 100% bending that SSD. I think I probably need to take this out. I wonder if I have to take the other one out. No, there's no way I can do that. Oh, is there? No. Oh, maybe. That's the problem here. I wonder if there's one up there too that I did and I missed. I'm gonna undo that one just to make sure I don't screw it up. I didn't put these on, and I'm not really sure how to get them in and get them off. Let me show you what I'm looking at right here. So these are the risers for it. So obviously it's a total 110. This is an 80. Okay, so what I decided to do was, um, which is probably the correct way to do it, I would guess, is install these with their own screws, and then I'm just gonna drop the heat sinks right on top of them. Um, again, you know, I, don't, I haven't had any with a heat sink before. So that's the issue. So this should just slide right in. And then we'll be able to fasten it. And I don't know if it's gonna to be touching, but it will once we screw it down. And look at the absolute minimal amount of clearance that we have between the uh, shroud or the the heat sink and then the processor uh, cradle and I'm not sure if that's if that's an OEM cradle or if that's just the way that the deep cool stuff works come on All right, I might need two hands for this okay I got them both in no problem now there's no flex on it, so I don't know, it wasn't really screwing it in that did anything, but it was taking that other screw off because it was resting on top of that. Uh, the top one, still no flex. I assume they're touching, but I could be wrong. Um, but it looks like they are. And let's see, is there a gap in between? There is the ever so smallest gap between the heatsink and the, uh, the processor there. And then we'll get over here. That looks like it's touching, to be honest. Maybe not, but mm, that's not that important uh, since it's not the heat sink. But okay, cool. Now we can put the graphics card in. Uh, to do that, we first need to remove these um, grates here. I believe this is a triple slot GPU. May get away with removing two of them, but I'm going to remove three. Well, maybe I'll start with two. I'm gonna put you back in the cradle. So the first thing to do is this, on this case at least, there's this like metal shroud that covers up all the, um, the whatever they're, they're called, the IO shields, um, just with a little hand screw. 
So I'm gonna remove that, and then I don't know if you can see now. Now you can, there's a bunch of screws here, so we're just gonna take them off. Uh, it's not the top one. So I'm gonna take this one off. It's gonna have to line up with this right here, so it shouldn't be the top one. Um, although if it is, we'll figure it out. So there's two, and I wouldn't throw those away, just keep them, because you never know if you're gonna replace something or need it. Let's just see if we can do two. Oops, sorry about that, that's a bit of a bump. Okay. It's, uh, this graphics card has a protector on the PCI spot. take these off first actually and I'm also not again I'm not sure this might need to, we might need to take off top and bottom but maybe not shoot I was really, really hoping we weren't gonna take off the top, but it looks like we might we might have to. Oh, oh. Nice. Look at that. Let's turn this to see if it's flush. That's cool. There's actually, you know. Not really a lot of sag. I did buy a, and I'm gonna show it to you before I, I'm gonna put it right in, who cares, right? I'm not really sure the best way to make this work, but, ooh, <laughs> you know what? This might sink as soon as I take this bottom one out. I'm not taking it out, I'm just taking a screw off. Oh, shoot. Okay, this requires... Okay, so for this, I'm going to screw in the top one because it needs it to stay flat. All right, like that. There is a bit of sag in case we were wondering, you know. I've never noticed that as an issue, but apparently that's a thing that people give a crap about. And it makes sense. I mean, in long term, it might cause some wear on the PCB. All right. So then this is a bracket that I bought. I'm not really sure the best way to do it. It came with two little things, two little rubber things to put on it. Fans. Could do something like that. Can't really say it's making that much of a difference, <laughs> to be honest. Hey, buddy. Rocket, how's it going, huh? You wanna say hi to the people in the video? Rocket, who's a big boy? You good doggy? Are you a good boy? Yeah, you wagging your tail? Are you wagging your tail? Yeah. Hi, buddy. Hi. Okay. So I got the bracket in. I can't really get this one, this screw in because it's getting blocked by the 
um, one of these little grates, but I think two is fine. And then we have the you know two hole in the grouse tar, two hole in the bracket. So there's just a little little rest right here. It's pretty close to the fan if it slips in, but I don't know why it would. But it's a lot more stable now. So I don't know if that's level. Yeah, it looks level. So that's pretty good. Now we just have to do the power cables. Go right here. Somehow get them back around there. But like you can see right now, it does fit. Everything look looking good. And now we're literally just RGB. Okay, this is a huge pain in the butt. So, <laughs> very tight fit. That's as tight as the cable will go. It has to spin it over. Luckily, there are two here. Well, it doesn't look the greatest, especially because the next one has a split as well. And I don't need that. I only need one. Ideally, I'd love it if I just had three of these. I may see if I can buy one, to be honest, buy a pack of these cables. I imagine you know, they're going to be expensive, so that might be a later down the road. It's just purely looks. But I think three of these fat cables going to each of them would look a lot better than this loop thing that I had to do here. Um, I might be able to, if I move this here, that might look a little better. Then I gotta find a way to get the other one in. All right, yeah, that looks okay. But whatever. Um, yeah. So it's not bad. What you wanna do is find the way that you need to do to pass it in so that you can kind of uh, flip it up. So if I pass this like this, then if I flip it up, it'll be no problem. So let's go through like that and go around the other side. I did that backwards. Ooh, it's close. I might be able to finagle this so you can't see the other one. I still did it upside down though. That is a lot of power cables. So I was able to kind of hide it. Not really much better than that. But um, I think that's the best we can do at the moment. Uh, might try and hide this behind this loop maybe. That might work. I don't know. But it is connected. We are good to go. What I want to do is install these um, SATA data cables. So these are going to go... They're not really necessary for the computer, but they will be if I want to use the other hard drives, the two three and a half that I have, and so that I can install um, the disk drive, I'm sorry, the optical drive to install Windows. So you see, those are the ports down there. I did this totally stupidly as in I should have done these first. I underestimated how much of a pain it would be to get these there. I mean, and I think I can still do it. It's just gonna take a bit because of the graphics card. Uh. Yeah, that's causing all the problem. It's actually the bracket is causing more of the problem because it's just there. So, but again, they go. On this motherboard, they go here. See? Uh, which is awesome placement, by the way. Other ones had them underneath the, like, literally behind the graphics card. So you'd have to use the angled connector. But it would still be really tight, and there'd be literally no way to get to them. Um, and this one has six, which is more than I'll need, that's for sure. I only need three, and I only need two permanently, since I'm not going to have a disk drive on here for the whole time. But... So that's where they go. I'm going to need to take away the phone. I don't think I can do it one-handed. Um, and I'll uh, show you what they look like done. Okay, there we have it. That actually didn't take that long. I just didn't need, I need two hands and I was able to, I had to tilt the, uh, really had to tilt the case so I could actually see what was going on. Um, so there you go. I have three now in there. Two will be used permanently. One I'll probably leave connected just so I don't have to deal with that again. Um, but one will be used for the, um, optical drive. 
Okay, so I brought the, um, I can actually bring it through the different side. It's, there's even one closer to the, uh, there's even one closer, so I'm gonna do that instead. I didn't realize that. Is this it? Yeah, it's right there. Where are we going? There we go. Okay. Keep as much of this off of this as possible. And I advise everybody to actually pay attention, unlike me, to how they're feeding the cables in. Right, let's see. Okay, so that's now snapped in. We can feed this, push this back, you know, try and keep it as far out as possible. I think there might be some things here though that I need to be giving myself access to. And so let's connect the cooler. Um, it's a little confusing because as you can see, it's a three pin and that's a four pin. Everywhere says that you can just use three pins and then the other difference is that the fourth pin is what controls the speed. So like a fan would have a variable speed, whereas the pump is just gonna be running at full speed the entire time, which makes sense. Um, there's a little notch up there that you can line it up and now it's in, so that should be good. Um, we gotta do something with these cables. I guess I can maybe tuck it up there. up there so I don't know if I can get it into, into that with that CPU cable but all right well that's that's for another time <laughs> but it is connected I'm definitely gonna do something with it because it's kind of just hanging out and it says for this one for this cooler we have a goofy uh, adapter so this is plugged in I think it's this I think it's this controller right here but I'm not sure so it wasn't that controller, it was this controller. So I already have the fans plugged into that. So I need to now route this behind the case. Then I'm gonna try and get it behind. Actually, no, I want those to be the, the flattest. So I'm gonna just try and stick this right in here. Where am I looking at? Oh, there you go. I have a feeling I just flipped you upside down. Let's try that. Okay. It's sort of in here. Why? No, it's not. Where the heck did it go? Okay, it had fallen out. So, this one has a four pin connector. So, it's going to go right into that CPU o OPT. Uh, now, the interesting thing is that the. Um, is that the motherboard said to use the other one, but the liquid cooling said to use, the, use it in this way. It said to do, the motherboard had it reversed. So CPU fan was gonna be fan, and CPU opt was going to be for um, the radiator fans. But I decided to go with the cooler because it's their converters that we're using. So I think they're the similar, it's just probably changed uh, in the control panel. Um, so the cooler is now connected, as is the radiator. At least. Power. This is this thing right here is for the LEDs. And then that goes into this right here. So I'm not sure. We're going to have to figure this out. <laughs> the best way to use this. But... to integrate it with these four fans, of course, and then the, the front light strips. All right, so I still need to do the USB 3. Totally forgot about it. Wow, my, th this depth is pretty crazy. Um, but I think I have all of the fans and the RGB connected. I don't see any more connectors, connectors 
for the fans. So I think they come through this thing here. I think that's where they get in the power and their uh, RGB. Could be totally wrong, but we're gonna try it, turn it on. It's not gonna make a difference if, if it isn't. So what we did here is this splitter here, this takes the two radiator fans, and this is the power part, not the, um, not the RGB part. And it connects it to the, that pump connector that I was talking about up, up top. And it's also gonna go, to, it goes to the pump. So, or am I doing wrong here? Did I get that mixed up? That might be the RGB. It is. Yeah, it is. So that's the RGB for the cooler, the pump, the cooler, and the two radiator fans. And then this is the power for the two radiator fans, which goes into the um, CPU fan spot. And then the pump is in the um, CPU OPT optional spot up there. So for the case fans, the RGB, and I'm not really sure this might power everything. I don't think it will, but... Maybe they actually that you know what that might require. I'm really not sure. It might require a the SATA SATA cable SATA power cable to power all of them. So I might plug that in anyways. Because here's the con here's the controller. We have, this board has two VDGs. So there's the one for down here, and then there's the one that I connected up there for the uh, radiators and the cooler. Just because it's closer, you know, top bottom. Uh, cable wise though, inside, this is looking pretty good. I hate these right here. I, I hate little cables and I don't know how I'm supposed to get rid of these. Maybe if I put them like in a loop, like it'll look better. Like if I, if I, you know, pop them out a bit rather than making them look like they're, look like they're too small, you know, too short. So they're tight. I really don't like that though, um, at all. So I'm not really sure what the best mode, uh, of hiding these is. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. Same thing over here. I don't like that either. All the other fans are gone. You know, like the cables all go to the back. These power cables are, and that's the uh, on-off button. Power cables for the GPU look hilarious because uh, there's just a bajillion of them. Um, and then USB is right down at the bottom. So we're going to stick this in. If I can fit it, yeah, we can. It makes it look ugly, but whatever. So you don't need this, to be honest. This is for the I/O panel up at the top, but uh, my current computer has no USB 3.2 on the top, or USB 3 or whatever the hell it is. And by my current, I mean my 10-year-old gaming PC. It just says it on the motherboard. So it's a huge pain in the ass not having it on the top because you have to reach around the back. You know what's weird, I will say, is that nothing seems to be clicking into this motherboard. I don't know if it's the case, the cables from the case, or if it's the motherboard, but it's like, I, there's no audible clicking. It's, a, it's bugging me. So, I mean, there's that. That's that. So now we're done. Everything's connected except for the... Um, I stand corrected, we are not done. I have to put the audio cable in, again, for the front I.O. panel. I'm not really sure where this goes. I think it's over here, which is a bummer. I, don't know. <laughs> I can route it all the way through the back, which I'm gonna. I'm sorry, I'm not focusing on anything. See, it says audio there, and this is the cable right here. So I think that. So we're just gonna connect this down. So I believe it goes like this. So turn this like that, because we're missing a pin down there. And turn this flashback on. Not that it's gonna focus on anything. That's absolutely what we do. Can I get it with my other hand? Because uh, again, it's not even the card, it's the stupid cradle that I bought for the card. That's causing this to have so little clearance underneath. I mean, that's not going in, and it definitely should be. I just gotta push it. It turns out it was in. I, it's, 
I don't know what it is, but this is just not, nothing in there is making a click or an audible, you know, it's not like sliding in and getting tighter. It's just the same push rate and it's making me think it's not getting connected, but well, there we have it. It's all in and I do believe that's the last part. I've said that like 10 times, so I'm probably wrong, but audio, power cable, we've already done that. Um, that was like the first thing we did. This is the USB 3, these fat cables here. Um, hard drives and the optical. Um, I need to go put those in. Uh, certainly at least the optical, just like so I can install Windows. Um, and I think I'm going to set up a monitor down here so I don't have to move this up because there's more space on my desk, on my table than there is on the desk. So I actually have a monitor over in that little thing right there. So that'll be good. So I think everything's good though. Uh, once everything's set, I will do cable management back here with zip ties. And I mean, there's going to be a smushed in here with a panel, but it's pretty, it's pretty, you know, these are some pretty fat cables, so it's going to be a problem. Um, and then these ones have like sticky things that I can stick to the side, but I'm probably going to try and shove everything up there that I can. Um, it really, it comes down to this. It comes down to if this little controller is connected correctly, because that's all the case fans. Everything else I'm pretty sure is, is connected correctly because I went right through the instructions. Um, but this little controller thing I have connected to, oh, well, that's right. There's no instructions for this damn thing. So like there's no instructions for the, um, the fans. And I'm not sure, it's like there's not even on here, so the fans must be an add-on. So I'm trying to just figure out if, let me see here. Here's the SATA connector that comes from this. But again, there's no instructions. So I don't want to like double connect something to the power and mess everything up. You know, it would just be connected there. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try and uh, go online and see if I can find something, but other than that, I'll uh, do the hard drives. This is what the old computer looks like. As you can see, no real cable management. Uh, this was a custom window I put in. Uh, me and my buddy built computers around the same time. And, uh, oops, there goes the screw. They didn't really come with windows back then. So we took, uh, we took a, Dremel tool and cut it out. It's, uh, so like, and then we got some, some U U fittings and made that around, which is pretty good. Uh, it came out very well. This is super dusty. It's been forever since I've done any cleaning on this. I just figured I would uh, show you this case or this computer because I wanted to show you the difference in graphics cards. This was cross fired. Let's say, you know, AMD equivalent of SLI. We had a, let's say 128, so dusty in here, it's been forever. Um, SATA SSD. And here are the uh, drives that I'll be taking. I'll be taking these two, I think. One's, tw one's a two terabyte, one's a three terabyte. They're not that old, um, if I can fit them. And then there's a Blu-ray drive up here. 16 gigs of RAM, I think. I don't think I went 32. I could be wrong though. No. Uh, Corsair AIO with a push pull configuration. These are 5770 cards, by the way. This was a really good motherboard. This is a gigabit, gigabyte, I'm sorry, uh, 990 FX, FXA UD3. And they had several variants, uh, variants of it, but it was really expensive back then. I mean, I loved this computer. It did a really good job. I'm processor on this is actually the AMD. FX 8120, the eight core bulldozer. 
big power draw. So you can see these are the tubes I was talking about. So how far we've come, huh? And then again, again, this was me mega overkill back then for 950 watts. Now the 8120 does use a ton of power, and the SLI cards use a ton of power. But I feel like I never used more than 650 watts, even at peak load. So I want to take out one of these one of these cards just so I can show you how much smaller they were. So and keep in mind that this gigabit is literally the slow is the, is one of the smallest cards that you can get of the 6900 or the current generation in general for the high end cards. And here we have the 5770. It is a dual slot, but full dual slot, no dual slot with a really triple slot. And it's that much shorter. <laughs> I mean, that's hilarious. Uh, this was a pretty good card at the time. It wasn't anything close to like the top. Well, it might have been. It might have been. But when you SLI the two of them, they were pretty damn good. Um, but yeah, just look at how much smaller that is than the current gen of graphics cards. Uh, opposite of cell phones, huh? All right, well, that's actually not true because <laughs> the cell phone is getting bigger as well. This one I'm holding on is like a tablet, but but they pack more into it, you know, and they're not getting fatter. They're just getting bigger screens. So let's move these over. Okay, on this case, the um, there's a hard drive cradle. So you take it out to attach it. I'm trying to think of if this is, is there only one screw? No, there must be more. There is one screw. That's nice. Now that we have it out, the case came with some uh, screws. If I can find them. And another video said that there was only one, and I don't think you can see this. There we go. Okay, another video said there was only one uh, hard drive cradle, and that's not true. Uh, for 2.5 hard drives, so these are 3.5. So it's gonna use all of these little goofy screws. Um, right here because you can mount them two different ways so you can mount them on the sides which is the traditional way or you can mount them there's screws on the bottom of the hard drive as well so you can see right here so I'm gonna mount one on the top and one below it these aren't gonna get a lot of use these are media drives like I was saying so it's they're gonna spend most of their life dormant uh, you know but if I'm playing a movie or something or or you know, I use these to back up my cell phones too, because I don't like to delete anything for some stupid reason. Or I shouldn't say that. I do do not mind deleting stuff. However, I record so many videos, like anything that catches my eye, this is a different screw, that it would take me forever to go through and see what is uh, and isn't worth keeping. So I just save everything. Since this space was never an issue, and it's still not going to be an issue. So I think one of these, the three terabyte is the second one that I got, and it's got, you know, 2.2 2 terabytes left. So. so you can see right there, we got it in on top. And then with the next drive, we're going to put it inside. Like so. And then these have these hard drives have little side holes as well. So again, this this case has multiple places that you can fit storage. It doesn't have a, a spot the spot for the opticals. That is a truth. There is no optical spot unless you somehow threw one in there up top. But they have to take the back off every time. But it seems that most cases are that way now. And it is what it is. I've, you know, I can't remember the last time that I used a, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the last time I used an optical drive. My uh, laptop doesn't have one. My other laptop doesn't have one. The only, the only thing that has one is this, uh, is this old desktop to my right. 
and then like you know the Xbox and stuff. But I don't even use it for that anymore. Everything is streaming. All the games are downloads. So good stuff. So we're good. Uh, you can put all three in. I don't think I'm going to because there's no point. Eh, maybe I will. No, there's no point. Okay. So just slide this back in. You can't see that. All right. So yeah, so just slide it back in underneath all the other cables. Causing a bit of an issue. Okay, so I pushed it too far. Okay, perfect. Now we're locked in. Take our screw, this one, I think. Lock the cradle back in. Perfect. And then this is what we pulled those SATA cables for. It's also why we have this SATA power cable here. That and the um, optical drive. So I don't know if you can see this. Again. So yeah, it's just these connectors right here. So if you're using any hard drives or SATA SSDs, like those little, that little tiny square 2.5 inch one that I showed you in the old computer, you'll need these power connectors to get it connected. Um, hold that down and then sure what I did with them all. Here they are. Oops. Connect her there. That's it. Now you have your hard drives. I think it's best to keep the airflow off of this radiator. So I might, there's some zip tie slots right here. I'm gonna do that. Keep it kind of off to the side like that. I'm not gonna put anything on together until we get Windows installed with the optical drive. Um, but now we are, as this computer will run, fully connected, hopefully. Let's try and turn it on. Okay. I guess let's give it a shot. Turning the master power cable on. Something was connected. Let's turn the power cable. Fans are spinning. Graphics cards lighting up. Oh baby. No video yet though. Hmm. Okay. Hey, look at that. So, all right, so we got video, which is great. And then we lost it. So we might need to flash the BIOS. I'm gonna mash delete. Oh man, you know what? We just need the windows. This is so cool. That was the first time. And look at how cool all of those fans look. Everything is in sync. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, I gotta turn it off because I totally forgot to plug in the uh, Blu-ray drive.
The other thing that I need to do is uh, install the Wi-Fi antenna, which just goes into the back. It's uh, two little leads that go to the back. Assuming that we get everything installed, which it looks like we're waiting for the, uh, the installed disk, so this is probably good, I'm very happy. It's the first time I've built a computer in any computer probably in eight years. So, and a gaming computer with all these extra components in 10 plus years. So, all right. Oh, it's magnetic, ooh. Yeah, I don't think that will cause any issue, but I'll keep it there just in case. All right, now let's go install the optical drive. Okay, I got a nice, nice optical drive just sitting on the top of the thing there. No place to store it, so. Everything requires scissors now. No peeling or just easy tears. Okay. They do make, actually, um, windows that comes on a USB. You know, and I would have done that. Uh, I think you can actually take a key if you get if you buy a disc. I think mean, you can use the key, and um, oh yeah, and create a bootable USB drive on it. But there's no point, you know, if I had a drive. Press A key. All right. Let's see if that worked. Windows logo, baby. You can hear the optical drive whirring. That's actually a Blu-ray drive, uh, Blu-ray writable drive. It's funny. The old computer that I had has a had the Blu-ray, which uh, I don't know if I'll be keeping that or putting it back in. I'm gonna give away the computer to uh, a family member. Uh, it's just because it's you know, still not a bad computer, it's just not good for gaming. Um, it had a Blu-ray and it had a light scribe, you remember those, which are pretty crazy. You can actually, you know, make your own labels, which was a really neat feature, but obviously the one that it had it was uh, monotone, so. Alright, let's see how this goes. I'm not going to make you watch this, I'll check in. This might save you a bit of a hassle um, if you want to try and use smart access memory. So I installed Windows not knowing the difference, um, not, not knowing the difference, not knowing how to do this because you need to have it set into uh, UEFI versus legacy. So if you don't have your BIOS, uh, and I'll go back and show that um, and not later earlier. Um, if you don't have your BIOS set to disable CSM before you install Windows, it's not going to let you change it to GPT. You need GPT to use smart access memory if you have an AMD system. So, like you see here, this is the, um, the process. So you're going to first type in Shift F10 to bring up the command prompt, and this is during the install, you can see here. Um, when you get to that screen where it says where you want to install Windows, Shift F10 brings up Command Prompt. Then you're going to type in Disk Part, and that'll bring up Disk Part right here. Then you click List Disk, and then um, it shows you all the disks. So I wanted to install it on Disk 2. You see there's no, there was no star here for GPT. I don't know why this one is a GPT, but whatever. Um, I did Select Disk 2. Disk 2 is now the selected disk. I did Clean. I accidentally, I was following a guide, I accidentally said Convert MBR. It doesn't matter. That's what it already was. Um, then I did convert GPT. So then I successfully converted disk 2 into GPT. Then I did list disk again, confirm. You can see GPT has the star, so it is GPT on uh, disk 2. Um, and that's all, we, all there is to it. Now you can close out of the window. And then it should, if you do refresh, it should let us now install to it. And you see, you notice that error message before. Because I turned off CSM, um, it wouldn't let me install to anything that wasn't a GPT drive, so. Hopefully this works now. As you can see, I actually uh, reversed the, or flipped the water cooler, so the tubes come out the bottom of it, and they travel up to the radiator there. Still, ideally, I think you'd want to have it with the radiator tubes, so these tubes up here at the bottom, but 
the cables there or the, the tubes just simply aren't long enough, especially with a graphics card. So like this, it's fine though. I mean, there's still a big enough difference between the top of the pump and the top of the radiator so that if there are any air bubbles, they'll, they'll get kept up here. I don't think it was a <clears throat> necessary change, but I just figured if I could do it, you know, give it a little added bit of cushion, <clears throat> but they are pretty, they are pretty uh, tight. This tube is pretty tight. Um, yeah, but other than that, everything is the same as it was in the video. Hey everyone. So I just wanted to share with you the benchmarks, the most recent benchmarks from this uh, from this new system that I just built. As you can see, 99th percentile um, for the total pass mark up here, which is pretty good. Um, it came in at 10,217. The big number here is the CPU. So that's 41,811. That's like 2,500 points greater than the average for this processor. I'm not sure why. Um, even when I didn't do any optimizations, it was around 40,000, so it's still a little better. Could have something to do with the RAM that you team it with. Um, but I also did CPU Ryzen Master Curve uh, Optimizer. So that took about an hour and a half to run. I guess what happens is the system goes through and it, it literally volts or undervolts or overvolts or I have no idea because I don't do overclocking, but it does it for every core individually. Now I guess it maybe tests its strengths and its weaknesses. Um, and I applied that and it seemed to give me another, you know, 1500 points or 1300 points, something like that. Now it wasn't, it was about, it was about 1500 or uh, I think I was a little bit over uh, 40,000 for, um, and you see that the disc mark is 99th percentile. That makes sense. It is the um, Western Digital SN850. It is a Gen 4 with max read of 7,000, max write of 5,000. Really quick. Memory was the weak point here. You can see it's only 88th percentile. Um, I'm not surprised. It's nothing special. It's, I mean, it's not bad. It's Team Group uh, T Force Vulcan Z. Um, 3200 megahertz. You can probably get higher higher megahertz. Uh, I don't know if the CPU or the motherboard can um, utilize that. So, I mean, whatever. I think I'm totally fine with 88th percentile. Um, and 32 gigs seems to be more than enough. I think the most I've seen is Forza pulling in, you know, 11 gigs, I think. Um, and that's, you know, that's it. And that's on everything ultra. Um, 2D Mark, 1320, 3D Mark, 31,480, 99th percentile for both of those. That's the graphics card, 6900 XT. Um, and again, the processor is the Ryzen 9 5900X. So you can see this is a um, pretty dang good build. Um, and if you look over here, I've had these, these temperature um, trackers. Uh, I've had them up the entire time I was running the benchmark, so you can see um, we had max of 70. That's not bad, uh, and it's sitting right around 37 right now. So. All right, everybody, so that is it. As you can see, we have all the LEDs matching uh, RGB. I can switch them to yellow. I can switch them to red, green, dark blue, light blue. You can do flash, I don't know why you would, but you can. <laughs> uh, there's a cool thing, you can do it with music. So I'm not sure on how the speakers, so we can't actually uh, show you the song, but we can uh, stick it, have it play something. You know, this is accessing on the hard drive, so it's taking forever. And also, one thing, I, I will say, it's not perfect, it's just that there's one thing is I can't get that other drive, it's recognized, but I can't access it, I'm not sure why. So I might need to um, look into that a little more. So the three terabyte one worked, the two terabyte is, is showing, and it's showing all the stats, showing healthy, it's just gone. I didn't hit music, did I? Okay. All right. You'll have to visualize or, or uh, remember the song. It's uh, harder, better, faster, stronger, Daft Punk. So, but it's cool though. So it'll supposedly go through. You know, it's going to the music. 
I can hear it. That's the part of that. <laughs> yeah. It actually looks pretty cool. I'll have to do another video of it uh, when I get the speakers get it set up upstairs. But I just wanted to do a close out of here. If anything, this proves that you can kind of fumble your way through this uh, and get it done. It's not that hard to build a computer. Um, we had no postcodes. Um, just follow the instructions. I mean, I didn't make any mistakes other than, you know, like having to uninstall things because the cable got in the way or such. But it's been a long time since I've uh, made a computer. And uh, as long as you follow the instructions, as long as you pick your parts appropriately before you get it. So make sure everything is is works with itself. Like, so, you know, don't pick a Intel motherboard if you have an AMD processor. Um, make sure your power supply has enough wattage to support it. Um, make sure your fans are good enough. Make sure that you have the right bracket for your liquid cooler if you're going to do that. Or do air cooling, it's fine. Same thing, graphics card, make sure you get the ones that you need. You know, Passmark is a great website. Um, and it's how you can check your processor and your graphics cards, you know, where they stack up. Um, and then also, you know, go to Reddit. Reddit has some great information um, for what to, how to build, you know. Um, they'll help you out over there. Uh, the other thing is, you know, RAM, obviously. This is 3200 megahertz RAM. I don't know if we can go any faster than that, but just don't pick RAM that's too fast for the processor or the motherboard because you'll be wasting your money. Uh, same thing with the SSD. Um, so obviously this was Gen 4 because it supports Gen 4. Um, that's about it. So I'm really happy that how this turned out. Like I said, we'll do, um, I'll do some benchmarks. We'll do that in another video. This video is already way too long. Uh, the chapters better work. That's all I can say. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, just, uh, reach out to me. Um, uh, more than happy to answer anything or give you my further opinions. And as always, uh, be sure to like this video if you uh, if you liked it, and subscribe if you like any of my other stuff. Uh, it's a pretty random channel, but uh, hopefully you find a lot of the stuff I do interesting. You know, video gaming, uh, computers, cars, um, funny stuff, ducks. So yeah, <laughs> give me a follow if you would. I'd really appreciate it.